next order of business. Uh, I just wanted to give the board an update as to the uh, the election. Uh, the staff came in at 5 a.m. this morning to prepare for the election. The majority of phone calls that came in from poll workers came between 5.30 to 7 o'clock a.m. with a great reduction of calls occurring by 9.30 a.m. For the most part, we're having a, a pretty good election, but uh, don't get me wrong, we've had issues, uh, some issues out there uh, related to poll workers, phone locations, and, and devices, but uh, those are somewhat a uh, normal course uh, for every election. But let me kind of point out some of those. Um, there, there were a number of no-shows, like we have in every election, as far as election justice just goes. I don't have a quantity for you today. I think it's going to be some time before we can do that, because normally we have our no-shows according to the payroll that, payroll that we receive, which is processed after the election. Um, these are, and as far as the no-show goes, these are either being filled or in the process of being filled. Uh, at this time, there are 22 presiding judges that are uh, that we don't have in place. Staff is, is in contact with precincts to ensure that the transfers of responsibilities are, are, are conducted to another poll worker within that precinct. Uh, political talent remains in, in all precincts that we are aware of at this time. Of course, uh, we, we are closely monitoring that. We have seen signs where uh, our precincts are not sharing the devices. Again, this is kind of a, somewhat of an uh, institutional practice when we were in a punch card era. We were had specific voting devices for specific voting precincts, and now in this uh, electronic voting system, uh, individuals with or precincts within a poll location can share any of the devices in there. So we've uh, seen some uh, situations where poll workers are not sharing of the devices, which may produce long lines, and I'll get to that in a second here. Uh, we did see one instance where PG, uh, the presiding judge, uh, wiped the encoders where we had to send out staff and making sure that uh, the encoders was uh, reprogrammed appropriately. Uh, regarding the polling locations, uh, we had uh, a total of six polling locations where the custodians did not arrive after, did, uh, arrived after 6 a.m., all the locations that did not open on time, there were four. Uh, those locations were Dun Dunbar Elementary, Wood Woodbury Elementary, Boulevard Elementary, and Beachland Presbyterian. Um, of, of, the, uh, of those four polling locations, Dunbar Elementary, uh, there were five voters that uh, were not able to cast their ballot at that time. Um, again, optical scans were offered um, after, but that was subsequent after the, the five individuals had left. Um, total of number of optical scans. If the devices were not uh, set up on time according to 6:30, we allowed voters to cast their optical scan, to cast an optical scan ballot. Of those polling locations, let me read those off to you. We had Westwood, uh, Woodbury School, Coventry Elementary, Lonnie Barton, Lo Alcazar Hotel, and Fuchs um, Mizrachi. Uh, and Grace uh, Christian Missionary Alignments. And I don't want to just isolate it to those, but those are the ones that staff is aware of, and I want to make sure that those are noted. Um, again, getting back to what I had said earlier as far as long lines goes, uh, we are getting reports of some long lines in isolated areas. Uh, in, in most cases, we have not heard of any uh, precinct where there is over 30 individuals in that line. Uh, we have sent uh, as many devices as we can. What we've had to do, though, is just prioritize those deliveries, uh, making sure that any devices that uh, need to be corrected first were the ones that we're going to receive the first priority, and then any devices that uh, we've had still on hand, we would send those out. Um, one of the things that we're experiencing in this election is, uh, which is, uh, I think, one of the le learning lessons, and which we've received in, in previous elections also, is, is the high rate of duplicate calls of the same issue over and over again. And of course, that um, uh, backlogs our phones and makes us do more work and try to isolate what are the respective issues. I think one of the uh, tremendous things and successful things that has occurred is that our IVR system, our interactive voice response system, where we have that monitoring system as to what phone locations are up and running, if there are any precincts or, or phone locations that are adversely affected. And uh, we've been able to respond more effectively and timely. And I think that's what this election is about, is the ability, in any election, uh, for that matter, is the ability to <coughs> respond accordingly, accordingly in, in a timely fashion. Um, uh, poll workers, again, I've already mentioned the issue of the poll workers not sharing the devices. Uh, let me talk about the devices themselves. I think the, a couple of 
things that we've seen within the devices, again, the same things that we experienced in May, is you know we've had some hardware issues regarding the legs. Um, and we've seen a, a share of, of phone calls dealing with that, as well as the printers, where we've had to send out staff and to correct those, or technicians that were trained, and send those out to correct them and that get getting those devices up and running. Um, I haven't received, or we have not received, any uh, issues of uh, screen freezes that we're aware of. Well, that's not to say that there are, uh, there are, it's just that we have not been made aware of any of those issues. Um, then there's the anecdotal sides of this. Um, you know, we get phone calls, and we're getting phone calls from a number of sources, from interested organizations, to the poll workers themselves, to the election day technicians. Uh, we received three questions dealing with the calibration of the devices, and we verified that where, in fact, there was one potential uh, calibration issue where we've had to set that the device aside, in which the technicians have done so. Another issue is dealing with observer rights. Um, uh, as per House Bill 3, when they changed the General Assembly passed that uh, bill and when it took into effect, uh, there are some questions out, uh, out there between the poll workers and election day technicians and the observers <coughs> and interaction between uh, each other as to whether there should be an interaction. We've had some situations where the poll workers and election day technicians have um, uh, contacted law enforcement and asked those individuals to be removed from the polling locations. Um, interested organizations, one of the uh, items that we've uh, heard also is, is interested organizations posting signs redirecting uh, voters to a different location. Um, regular voters, uh, the other issues is though for those uh, polling locations that were... Don't leave that point. Organizations are suggesting that voters go to other locations? Uh, what we've seen is, is signs posted uh, redirecting individuals instead of from the polling location that they're going to to a different location. Uh, so there's signs out, out, out there in the field um, that are uh, redirecting. At least those are the phone calls that, that, that have been uh, that uh, we have been receiving. Michael, have you notified the law authorities? I have uh, not. Uh, I have not personally not notified uh, the individual that uh, that I need to get more information is our elections uh, administration director to determine whether or not uh, law enforcement. Mike, I, I really think that uh, speaking on behalf of all the board, anything like that happens, we want to know who the perpetrators are. <laughs> and, uh, they are interfering with the election process at that point. And I think it's important that uh, you, uh, <coughs> you know, proper authorities notify and refer to the prosecutor of the U.S. Attorney's Office. And, and that may have, have occurred. I just don't have that information available to me. Right now. The other uh, item, excuse me, Michael, would Jackie have that information? Yes, yeah, yes, Jackie would have that information. Could we have somebody to uh, get Jackie? Uh, Brandon. Brandon. Uh, there, the, uh, dealing with the optical scan ballots that voters are voting on, um, that when the polls were not open, uh, or I'm sorry, not so much that the polls were not open, but when the Z at the, the electronic voting units were not set up on a uh, time for the opening, uh, and when voters were able, um, were casting their ballots on optical scan, there were some, been some questions as to what the uh, poll workers should do when the voter brings back that optical scan ballot. What they've been instructed is to place that optical scan ballot into the provisional envelope, mark on the front of the envelope, regular voter, that way it provides some form of security to the voter. So uh, that's what we have done in those types of situations. The regular, those ballots are not considered provisional ballots, they're considered part of a regular ballot and will be processed as such. Those ballots, any optical scan ballots, will be processed during the official canvas. Um, the, the other no, no, no. <coughs> if, if, if you place the optical scan uh, ballot in a provisional envelope and you mark it regular, shouldn't those ballots be counted tonight as a part of the it was it, dealing as far as our procedures goes. We were planning on any optical scan ballots being cast would be uh, processed during the official count because most of those are provisional ballots. But these are only. But these are not provisional. These are not provisional ballots. No, I uh, I agree, but we don't count the absentee ballots. Our our, our 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 sole focus is going to be the memory cards uh, for for tonight. Um, but, but I think, you, you know, following up on uh, Mr. Coach's question, how many of these do, you, do we have any idea how many of these there are? Um, we 
do not know at this time how many of those obstacles can balance uh, that were passed uh, as resolutions that there are. You have the list of all the conditions. Yes, no, and we can get a number. I mean, we'll be able to call the, I mean, there was only a few of those that we needed to call to get a, a number of how many ballots that were passed. So we'll try to provide you by the end of the night. Um, the other item also, there was a question as to uh, some concern as to when the, whether it be a provisional ballot or whether it be a regular voter, of the multiple pages to a ballot. And again, the poll workers were instructed to tear up as many pages that there are that makes up one ballot. Um, and there have been uh, calls that we have received where a person may have received only um, uh, the candidate page as opposed to the issues page. So we're looking into that and making sure that if there are any questions that we uh, properly instruct the voter again, uh, that they are to provide them the full ballot that may be multiple pages. Um, there was a call in that dealt with uh, a power failure in, in citywide in Brook Park. That will, I don't, I'm going to defer to um, Gwen to determine whether, in fact, that has occurred, but that was a phone call, whether it was in, in case uh, uh, that's something that we'll monitor. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the phone calls we've had. At the time, I would say approximately 12 o'clock, we had uh, 5,288 phone calls coming into the agency, and we answered 4,913, 4, and I would say that the majority of those came off of the, the went into the IVR system. Uh, and the average speed of uh, pickup was uh, essentially 47 seconds. These calls are not the calls that went into the IVR. Oh, okay. The okay. So there so, were other additional calls that went into the IVR. So we were able to handle a, a, a lot, uh, the majority of those, uh, uh, those phone calls. Um, Gwen, do you have the information about post park power, the post park power, power failure? Actually, I don't have everybody change the call to the email. Nothing significant in terms of 
no one is, um, I have not heard of any instance where somebody is being turned, to, turned away. There are questions like, this gentleman brought in an old passport and it's expired, does that work? Oh, but he has a current um, utility bill, forget it, look at you know, <coughs> Those are kind of the clarification questions that are coming up. I think, uh, but they, they definitely are coming in. Jane, uh, 